You just saw the first night of the epic miniseries on RTV6 tonight, When We Rise. It chronicles the civil rights struggles, setbacks, and triumphs of the LGBT community. One Indiana town just outside Bloomington is turning the table on stereotypes. Call 6 Investigates Paris Lubell takes you to a small town raising eyebrows and rainbows in Indiana and across the country. Spencer, Indiana, population 2,217. It's definitely home for us. From little used railroad tracks to the fallout shelter signs still on the county courthouse, Spencer's been around for nearly two centuries. And while some things seem to be stuck in past moments, I don't know, I just have to capture moments. Not everything is stuck in the past. Years ago, Jonathan Balish, his husband, and a group of people asked the question, why? Why don't we focus on this? Like, why don't we create an organization that is designed specifically to address um, the needs of that part of the community? And that moment started a movement to create change, change in the way people think, and change in the way people are perceived. Now, Spencer's quickly becoming one of the biggest small town LGBT hubs in America. And in June, for the past 10 years, Spencer's had a pride festival. The last nine have taken over the city square. And year after year, Spencer's Pride Fest has grown. It's really fantastic. We have such a great time with the festival. We get such awesome feedback from the public about it. Um, it's such a fun place to be. It's an affirming place to be. And it doesn't matter if you're gay, lesbian, trans, heterosexual, whatever. You know, people love and have a really good time at the festivals. But wanting to do more, the group had another idea. Visibility is half the battle a lot of times. And just this past year, a new storefront has opened on the other side of the town square from the Owen County Republican headquarters. One of our core tenants is to be out and proud and very visible. That's what the center is for us, right? We're downtown. We couldn't possibly be any closer to the courthouse than we are. And it's a very visible representation of who we are as people and as a community. The group of volunteers has grown even bigger. And you're actually making a difference in someone's life. And just a few weeks ago, meeting to plan out this year's Pride Festival. But it hasn't come without some pushback from the community, like one incident years ago during a Pride Fest. Someone had driven around the square and had dropped boxes and boxes of roofing nails all over the road. But then the community came together. All of a sudden there's a street sweeper going around. I didn't even know we had a street sweeper. I, I, mean, I still don't know that we have a street sweeper, but somewhere a street sweeper appeared and is cleaning up roofing nails. And I'm, I'm looking over and seeing, um, you know, uh, sheriff's deputies, um, large men, right, crawling underneath vehicles, picking up roofing nails individually um, so that people aren't going to drive over these things when they leave. And to see that and to see the community come together um, was phenomenal. And even though some aren't okay with it, they only have one message. As long as, as there are still people out there um, that, that don't understand um, what we're here for, that what we're about, that don't understand kind of the tenets of equality for LGBT people, then we've got work to do. In Spencer, Paris Lubell, RTV6. You just watched night two of the epic miniseries When We Rise, just before the start of our newscast. When We Rise chronicles the civil rights struggles, setbacks, and triumphs of the LGBT community. And tonight, Call 6 Investigates Paris Lubell introduces us to Hoosiers challenging the status quo of what it means to be a family. <laughs> a little bit of basketball and the typical sibling rivalry. For Joseph, Caleb, and Madeline, it was a good day. They got to miss swim practice. And while the kids play upstairs, dinner is being cooked downstairs. I'm actually dad. Uh, Larry is usually daddy. Meet Larry and Michael Foster, the parents of those three kids. They got together more than 20 years ago and always knew from the very beginning that they wanted a family. I've always known I was going to have kids. So in 2003, they adopted their first son, Joseph, through a private adoption. But they had to travel to Bloomington to get a judge to sign off on it. Because she was the only judge who would actually grant same-sex parent adoption, where she would put us both on the birth certificate. And then just a little while later, we knew we wanted more. We wanted more, uh, a larger family. And they became foster parents. Not long after Christmas in 2004, they were called for an emergency foster. He was being abused in his current foster home. He was 
black and blue from head to toe from being abused. And I picked him up at 1030 at night, and I thought he was supposed to be a temporary placement. And over two weeks, a bond formed. He looked up at me and said, what's your name? And I said, no, we've been through this. You know what my name is, kind of smiling, joking with him. I said, so what's my name? And he looked up at me and said, daddy. <laughs> so they started the process of trying to adopt Caleb. But through that process, we also found out he had a sister in foster care that he had never even met. At the time, Madeline's foster family didn't want to adopt, so Larry and Michael worked That's to adopt her as well. A, that, was, that was when you weren't so cute. Name, <laughs> when we made arrangements to pick her up, the current foster mom said, no, we're not taking her to that house because it's a same-sex household. And she goes, well, I'd rather adopt her than send her to a same-sex household. Uh, she used more colorful words than that. Michael and Larry had to go to a placement hearing and convince a panel of 15 that they were good parents. Seemed above and beyond <laughs> Su <laughs> suit <laughs> suitable <laughs> parent kind of questions. The, fir the first question they asked was, are you going to tell the children they're adopted? I have a little bit of a sarcastic sense of humor, so the first thing I looked at them and said, well, I'm going to either have to tell them that or where my uterus went. Like, well, <laughs> like. The panel voted unanimously to let Michael and Larry adopt them. And ever since, like any other family, it's been an adventure. You know, if, any, if, you, different. if you asked anyone who the harder one would be, they would say him. But the kids all know that really, I'm he's the pushover. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's just about the kids. We want to surround them with love. All three of our kids did not start out their life with a lot of love, and that's what we've tried to give them. In Indianapolis, Paris LaBelle, RTV6.